Two days ago, I made a video where I was talking about Ezra Miller and the biggest problem with Ezra Miller. I've already got 300 views. And in today's video, I'm not going to be talking about any kind of thing related to that, so I don't know why I mentioned it. But I guess we're talking about a person that was in that movie, too, and this is Ben Affleck, of course. Well, my initial thoughts on Ben Affleck as Batman was kind of like, oh, well, he kind of looks a little bit like how you would think Batman would look. You know, he has this big, bulky appearance. He's really big. That sounded kind of weird, but you know what I mean. He's really big. He's huge. That's that's even weirder. He looks like he can lift 20,000 pounds when put into the same mirror of, you know, Kristen Bell's Batman or something like that. And of course, it's a fictional realm, so nobody can actually look like they lift 20,000 pounds because this is real life. And nobody actually looks like they can lift 20,000 pounds in the real world. It just doesn't exist. But I'll tell you right now, if there's anybody in the entire world that really makes me believe that they can definitely play Batman and they look like they lift 20,000 pounds... It's Ben Affleck, or especially when he first became Batman in Batman v Superman. And let me just tell you, this movie is so extremely underrated. People hated on this movie so bad. I remember back in the day, before this movie even came out, actually, I Am Legend, which was a movie that came out almost six years before Batman v Superman, and it sponsored Batman v Superman. And it had the same logo and everything, so it wasn't just some kind of rip-off Batman v Superman happening at this time in this post-apocalyptic world. No, this was in fact 100%. Batman v Superman, and it's so extremely and utterly underrated that it's actually throw-up worthy, because I remember when I first watched this movie, I actually loved it. I, like, when this movie came out, I was probably seven or eight. No, maybe a bit older than that, but I was probably ten. I remember I used to got, I remember I got all the action figures for that Batman v Superman movie, and well, my little brother stepped on one of them, and well, he's, uh, he's gone now. I remember I loved the movie so much. It was my favorite Batman movie at the time. And before that, I had watched movies like The Dark Knight, because that movie came out when I was born, I believe. And then The Dark Knight 2, whatever the fuck that movie was called, again, I forgot. But that movie was also pretty good, of course, not as good as the original Dark Knight. It just isn't. The movie did obviously very bad, because this is just my subjective opinion, and obviously I only think it was the good movie, because in IMD, this movie only got a 6.4 with a 29% Rotten Tomato rating, which is absolutely pedophilic. I mean, it's it's just... It's bigotry almost because how nonsensical that is. You can't tell me this movie is genuinely that bad. Maybe it's decent. Maybe even mediocre. But for a movie where we get to see Superman and Batman fight each other that has a $250 million budget, I think we should all be quite satisfied with the project just because of that fucking fight. But no, everybody didn't like it. And at this moment, this is when Ben Affleck's Batman starts becoming this kind of poster boy of... Just a muscle head, really. The main antagonistic themes that people say about Ben Affleck's Batman, of course, has to do with the way that Ben Affleck's Batman talks and how his character isn't written well, even though that isn't Ben Affleck's problem, and they put that on him for some reason, even though that just isn't his problem. The people that depicted his character and write his character, that's their problem. You know, Zack Snyder, for example, yeah, that's about his problem. And then when Justice League came out, this movie was a huge, huge flop, and it only made Ben Affleck's Batman look about seven times worse than it already was in comparison to all the other Batmans. The Justice League had a $300 million budget and made back only $657 million. That's only $300 more. Then you have these other big blockbuster type of movies like Marvel's Avengers that were releasing around this time, and they made over a billion dollars. Like, these were becoming some of the biggest box office records and they were coming purely from marvel of course not anything else it was literally marvel and i think it was at this point that the infamous interview of ben affleck getting questioned about the character comes out and it's really just sad because it's like you start to realize that maybe we're just being a little bit too hard on ben affleck you know maybe just a little bit because ben affleck isn't the worst batman not by any means this is the worst batman Ben Affleck's Batman is not the worst Batman, and I think he might actually even be the most comic-accurate Batman, because this Batman is superhuman, and he's in movies, and he's easily lifting up 20,000 pounds because he's slamming everybody's head around like it's absolutely nothing, so you can clearly imagine him being able to lift 20,000 pounds. The suit doesn't also give him any kind of superhuman strength. It simply makes him bulletproof, and that's about it. So everything he's doing is within his physical limit. So he is definitely very accurate. But then you have people like Christian Bell's Batman that really got their ass rocked multiple times by other people that are not supposed to be able to be as strong as Batman by any means. 
Of course, I'm not taking any shots at Christian Bell's Batman now. I'm just saying that we definitely have a more comic-accurate Batman in Ben Affleck than we do in Christian Bell. The people that were even working on Christian Bell's Batman said multiple times that they were trying to make it very realistic. A very realistic Batman was coming to mind when they were thinking of the Dark Knight and Batman Begins. With Ben Affleck's Batman, they were thinking about the Justice League Batman, and they did a well, well, a decent job on that Batman. Of course, it was not global, and it wasn't great, and it wasn't even mediocre, really, at certain points. But it sure as hell was not a shit Batman, and I think we should all simmer down when it comes down to calling Ben Affleck the worst Batman. Since there is certainly another Batman that is just not as good as Ben Affleck's Batman, if we're trying to get down and dirty with it. Now, to put this case to end, what are we going to say about Ben Affleck's Batman at the end of it all? Are we going to say Ben Affleck's Batman is the worst Batman ever, is the absolutely weakest Batman ever, is the least best written Batman ever? Or are we simply going to say that he was an actually decent Batman with some comic accurate, if not all comic accurate traits, just maybe not put into the best place of a director? And also, maybe the actor could have been worked on a bit. The actor could have been Ben Affleck, but he was getting pretty old and gray by this point, and this Batman was already 20 years into his career, so there would have been no ground behind what was going to happen after this, and there was no way in hell we could ever get a solo Batman movie because it just wouldn't be as good because this Batman would already be 20-something years into his fucking career, and that's just a bit stupid. Guys, did I forget to mention that this Batman kills people? Like he fucking actually murders the fuck out of them? He's dead. So this Batman just casually kicks somebody's head off like they're a bunch of fucking bucket heads, pretty much. That guy's brains are definitely splattered all over the fucking floor. I mean, that just, yeah, nobody comes out of that alive. No, it's just not it. Now, I actually can't tell you if this guy's 100% dead, but he definitely has some back problems. Probably a fucking scoliosis from that shit, so I don't know. He's probably dead, most likely. I would want to be dead if I ended up like that guy right there. This guy is... he's not alive. And Batman, let me fucking finish my sentence for fuck's sake.